guys, today we're going to take a look at the iFootage Shark Slider. Uh, this one was sent over by Camera Motion Research, so make sure you check out their website at camotionllc.com. Um, anyways, the Shark Slider has been out for a little while, and we're just going to kind of run through it a little bit. But what's new is the S1A1 motorized edition that can be attached to the Shark Slider, uh, which really opens up a lot of potential to how you control the slider for either real-time video movement or uh, time-lapse um, time lapse type stuff. So the one thing that's pretty amazing is that the motor is fairly silent. So when you're doing interviews, um, it's hard to find a good motorized slider for interviews because that motor tends to get picked up by the microphones. Even if you're a distance away, a lot of the motors on motorized sliders are fairly noisy. Now this one is using a stepper motor and a, an, and a cog belt. So it's very silent, even though you're moving uh, during an interview process. So very, very quiet. So very interesting stuff with the uh, new motorized kit. First, let's kind of run through the Shark Slider, what it is. And, um, you know, again, it's been out there for a little while. One of the top rated sliders out on the market. But let's open up this bag. So this is an extra counterweight and I'll show you that in a second. Basically, you see how nice it is packed up in this bag. This is the shark slider. Now, if it's a little dirty, I've already taken this out a little bit. Um, so don't mind the, the dust. Okay, so we have the uh, shark slider here. Uh, first thing you'll notice is how large this stage is over here for your fluid head or ball head. Um, it has two levels, so you know that your camera is going to be level on its horizon. And then um, there's a belt drive here in the center. I don't know if you could see that. Um, underneath this carrier, there's even a hex tool. So the hex tool for making any of the adjustments on the bearings are down here, but the bearings can also be adjusted just by these two little clamp knobs here. So you loosen that up and then you can change the position of these two inner bearings or two rollers um, to make it tighter or looser. Uh, the belt system here, which is used f with the counterweight, and I'll show you that in a sec, um, can be adjusted very quickly here with these two clamp knobs as well. So everything is very easy to uh, adjust out in the field without uh, a lot of tools. Um, and then again, the, the slider works pretty well. This is all carbon fiber here, these tubes. Uh, they have these little feet that come out, rubber uh, adjustable feet here at the end. So that's so if you're putting it on a table, you're not marring up a surface, but very easy to pop out. Let's see. So very quick to adjust. Um, you have a massive cheese plate underneath here for all of your different type of mounting options, making sure this doesn't twist um, on your slider or your tripod. So. That's a, a quick look at just the slider itself. Um, it's a very smooth unit, but it gets even smoother when we add the counterweight. Now inside the bag here, you have the counterweight, which just drops in here. Then you put this little uh, clamp knob back on to keep it secure, but I'm not gonna put it on right now because now that you have the counterweight system here, as you move the slider, it has to build up a gradual speed. And as you release the slider, it comes to a gradual stop. So even if your hand is shaky in between the movement, the counterweight here is going to keep the movement continuous and smooth and you won't get that start stop jerky motion. Now, if you have a heavier camera system, This is something that comes with the, uh, the kit when you get it from Camera Motion Research. You get an optional uh, flywheel weight here. And this one mounts like this. Okay, so we got two little uh, clamp knobs that just go on right over here and that'll keep those two together. Again, you put this to hold the entire counterweight system to the slider. So now we have a little bit more weight. So if you're using a heavier camera system and you're doing that slide, you're gonna have more momentum here. And look how smooth this motion is. 
Uh, so if my hands are shaky where I'm doing a back and forth kind of movement, um, it's not going to show up on camera because the movement will be continuous. So you have a gradual start, the camera moves, and a gradual stop. So you're going to get better movements using this counterweight system. Now, iFootage was the first commercially available slider to add this counterweight system. After they released this, it works so well that every other slider manufacturer out there now has some variation to this. So if you look at all the other companies out there, they're all using some sort of counterweight uh, technique because that's how well it works. And so again, this is the iFooted Shark Slider, which they were the first ones to make this commercially available in their product. Very smooth. Um, okay, so let's take the uh, counterweights off because what we're really here to look at now is the new S1A1 motorized option. So inside of this kit here, we have the all the pieces. There's a couple of pamphlets here for you guys. Um, but what you get is a wireless controller. Now this one will control the motorized unit. And then once it's programmed, you can actually turn this off and walk away. The, once the unit is programmed, it'll just run on its own. But this is how you would program it. Kind of looks like a um, little game controller. Um, I'm not going to go through the interface or the menu. So if this, if you're looking for that, I'm not going to do it in this video because that's going to take forever. I just really want to show you the features, what it can do. And then if you guys want to dive into the tutorials and instructions, there's some videos on that, or I'll probably do a video myself. But right now I'm just going to show you some of the features that this new controller could do. So this right here is the unit it has a belt. The belt slips under the DC motor here. And these clamps are to adjust the tension of the belt. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to drop it in place. And we're just going to add these two thumb screws back on. Very quick. We want to make sure that the belt is around the motor on this end here. And we'll add this little uh, gear on this side. All you have to do is line up the white dots. We're going to pull the belts over. And then we put clamp knob over the gear. And then we pull the belt tension back and then we just clamp it underneath. And we have our motor attached to the slider now. Uh, so before we power it on, we want to zero this out because the, uh, the controller here can measure the amount of rail, but you have to start with a zero point. So you don't want to start in the middle here. So we're going to start with zero and then we're going to measure our rail all the way to the end. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that you can extend on this slider. So inside of this pocket here, we actually have some additional rails. Now these will screw into the end of this, which makes it very seamless and very smooth. And so you can have a very, very long slider. And then there's also an extra belt um, in here so that you can change the belt out if you're using uh, the extra rail. So you'll have a very, very long slider. You could still use the counterweight system uh, when your slider is that long. And then you can also use the motorized system when your slider is uh, this long as well. So we're not gonna put this on right now. Um, we're just gonna go right into the S1A1 because that's what is new about this slider. Um, so this right here is to trigger your camera and this is wireless as well. So if you're using something like a Canon 5D, you can use a shutter remote cable, which they provide tons of cables here for almost every type of camera. And so as this moves the slider, it can also fire the shutter on your camera. So you could do a shoot, move, shoot so that it moves first fires the camera. So if you're doing long exposure, it will wait until your camera's exposure is done and then it will move again so that it's not doing it simultaneously and, and uh, ruining your image. So very advanced here. Um, and again, it has all these cables to do this, but we're going to attach the V mount battery. So they give you a V mount battery in the kit and this is a 98 watt hour one, I believe. Um, and then they even give you a V-mount battery charger as well. So you don't have to worry about a charger. Let's move this case over, put the battery on. 
Now again, the battery doesn't have a live connection here. It's just to hold it in place. If you don't want to have the weight on your slider, you can put the battery elsewhere and get a longer D-tap cable and plug right in here on the side. Um, but this is it right here. We're gonna tap into our V-mount. Then we're just gonna run the cable to the input. And then we have an antenna here. I think it's in the box. This antenna again is a uh, wireless, so you can control it from a distance. And again, once you program the unit, you don't need the controller to be on or synced. Okay, so that's there. What, we'd, what we'll do now is we will plug or turn on the remote. Now remember, you wanna have this slider zeroed out, okay? So you wanna have it at the end of your slider. So even if you have extended rails, always start at your zero point here. Then we'll power this on now the menu is very confusing, um, but once you've done it a few times, um, you'll just you'll just know how to do it. But it's to me, it wasn't very intuitive. You really have to kind of look through the instructions and watch how it's done. But again, once you do it, then it's fine. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our distance of rails so that it knows when to stop, so this motor doesn't continue. There are some motorized sliders out there. Once it gets to the end, it starts going nuts unless you have some sort of kill switch. Uh, on each end. This one doesn't need it because we're going to measure the rails. So we're going to go to um, our setting here and we will set our distance. And so now that I'm zeroed out, I'm just going to move the slider down to the other end. And I will go maybe about that much and hit save. Okay. So now that we have our rail setup, we can go into um, say manual mode. And now if I want to go all the way back, I'm holding the joystick, it will stop at the end. If I go in the opposite direction, you'll notice I don't even have to look, it will stop at the end because we've set our distances here. Now, if you guys want to set your distance here in the middle, you could do that as well. If you want to start, instead of your zero point being here, you want to start here and maybe end over here, that's fine as well, because maybe you're doing a short movement for some sort of little interview. You don't want to go all the way to each end. You could zero here and you could end here. It's really up to you. So that's how you would set it. Now we're going to back out of here and we're going to do, um, now there's auto mode, there's time lapse, there's also record. So I'm going to go into the record and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, set um, let's say profile four maybe. I'll do profile four and then I'm going to record my movement. So I'm going to click and then I'm going to move. Maybe I'll stop here and then maybe I'll go there and then I'll stop over here. All right. So I recorded that movement and that is uh, about 12 seconds of movement there and uh, different speeds. So now that we have recorded in a, in a profile, now you could store a different you, uh, so many profiles on here so you could replay it, whatever your favorite ones are. We're going to go into auto mode and then we'll be able to play that back. So here we are, um, four, I'm going to do point A, point, point B, um, and then we're just going to play this. So it's going to go back to the beginning. And then when I hit play, you'll notice that it's going to move. Now this right now is set for, um, I set the speed basically, but you'll notice what will happen is I didn't go all the way down to the end, so it'll stop. And then that's point A, point B. So one end to the next. But if we do, if we change this to trace, I believe, let's go back and then we play it and we play our trace it's actually going to do the exact movements that I did last time. So you see, I'm not even holding the joystick and it's going back and forth, back and forth. So that's the trace option. We could do a ABA, um, which is kind of a somewhat of a loop. Um, and then again, you could set the speed. So even though you've recorded a movement, you could set the speed uh, of the movement so that it comes slower or faster. 
but I'm not going to dive too deep into that, but that's pretty cool because you could record your movements and you could play it back either in auto mode or in time lapse. So you could play it back in time lapse as well. Um, we're going to go into time lapse here really quickly. We'll do time mode. Um, I will reduce this so we could see it go a lot faster. My exposure time, I will just do one second interval. We'll do two second intervals. And you know, we'll do uh, profile four here. So I'm going to hit play. So if we were doing a time lapse right now, this is a very basic time lapse. You'll see that it's moving and I have it uh, moving at a certain speed and it will do my, my profile, uh, profile four. Um, but I have it moving at a certain speed because I set the time. So I set how long I want my movement to be from one end to the other. And I believe I set it for about 40 seconds or so, but we're going to exit that. And I'll show you what happens if I increase this number to say, we'll do one, we'll do one minute and we'll play this back. This should go about half the speed that it was typically going on before. So you notice that it is moving. It's just moving at half the speed. So if you set the time on how long it takes to get from point A to point B, you can kind of gauge the uh, speed of your carrier if you're doing time lapse. Now, if you have a fast shutter, this speed is not going to matter. But if you have a slower shutter, you're going to want to slow this down quite a bit. And then if you have a very long exposure where you don't need it moving during the exposure, then you'll have to do shoot, move, shoot, which this is capable of doing as well. I'm not going to dive into the menu again because there is a lot of features. This video would just be way too long, but that's kind of a quick look at the uh, shark slider. Very fast to set up, very few pieces, not a lot of tools. Uh, and with this V mount battery here, it can run for a very long time. And, um, I don't know if actually let's go back and show you one more thing again. Um, let's go back to manual mode and in manual mode, I could set the speed. Uh, so by default, this is, this is the fastest speed here. And you can kind of hear the motor, but it's still a lot quieter than most systems. Now this speed is going to be way too fast for some sort of interview or some B angle. So I'm going to dial my, uh, speed here to something like, I don't know, let's say 11 millimeters a second. And now you'll notice that we don't really hear the motor anymore and we have a very, very nice gradual speed. So I'm just holding the joystick, um, here on one end and, uh, you can see how gradual this is. This would be perfect for a B angle motorized slider. Um, and then, you know, again, on a live interview, you're not really going to hear that motor. You're not going to pick it up. So whoever's operating this, or you can operate it wirelessly or even loop it, do a trace, do a record, and then just have it play back end to end. You can have your camera set to the side and have that interview going. So very, very cool, uh, slider. And, and again, it, once it gets to the end, it's not going to go any further because we've limited it. Right. So here I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm in the wrong setting here. There you go. Okay. So here I'm going in the uh, opposite direction. Um, so I could just do this during an interview process. We'll be totally fine. We'll have a really, really nice camera move. Very quiet, not, not disturbing at all. So that's kind of a quick look guys. I don't want to dive into the uh, menu because it is very uh, confusing and that would take a long time, but hopefully you guys are interested in the iFootage slider here. If you guys want more information about this, make sure you check out my blog, cheesycam.com, or look the guys up here in the USA, uh, Camera Motion Research. They're the ones who are carrying it right now. Um, but, but I'll have all the information on the blog, cheesycam.com.